inland, 63% of housing structures are multi-unit and a significant number of rental houses housing more than one family. So what is the best way to mitigate situations where those in the home are not abiding by CDC guidelines? Sure, you know, first, an important distinction that needs to be made is between isolation and quarantine. So isolation keeps someone who is sick um, of COVID, who has tested positive for COVID-19, even if they don't present with any symptoms, away from other members from their home. And then quarantine is uh, basically keeps someone who was a close contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19 away from others. The best way to mitigate situations where those in the home are perhaps not abiding by CDC guidelines is to protect yourself. And this may be done by limiting contacts with others. Um, it's also very important uh, that we limit all forms of physical contact. So COVID-19, as we know, spreads between people who are in close contact, usually within six feet, through respiratory droplets created when someone talks, sneezes, and coughs. So staying away from others helps stop the spread of COVID-19. Also, in, while in the home, eating in separate rooms or areas while also washing dishes and utensils using gloves and warm water is really important. So sharing of personal items such as cups, glasses, dishes, silverware, towels, bedding, and electronics such as uh, phones and, and laptops with a person um, who perhaps has contracted COVID-19 needs to be avoided at all times. Um, additionally, washing hands is often a great way to prevent the spread of COVID-19. The CDC recommends that we wash our hands with soap and warm water for at least 20 seconds. So it's important that you tell everyone in your home to do the same as well. If soap and water are not readily available, using hand sanitizer that does contain at least 60% level of alcohol is, is needed. It's very important. So and also it's very important to avoid touching your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Uh, with unwashed hands. In the home, it's also very helpful to clean and disinfect all commonly touched surfaces and items that you and other members of your family use every day, such as tables, doorknobs, faucets, toilets, sinks, electronics, and also light switches. Um, as we all know, wearing masks is one of the best ways for all of us to be able to mitigate the spread of COVID-19, as it helps prevent a person who is ill from spreading the virus to others. The CDC also recommends placing a mask on all adults and also children who are over the age of two. Thank you very much for that very detailed explanation, Dr. Cruz. Um, this might be a little similar, but what suggestions would you give to those who cannot isolate a sick member of the home if that's not possible in a multi-family unit where there may be several people in the same room? Sure, and that's something that we're seeing more and more often here in Lynn. So basically, if you leave, if you live with others, with other family members or roommates who have contracted the virus, um, it's recommended that they stay specifically in a sick room uh, or an area in the home that's away from others or also uh, from away from pets and animals, using a separate bathroom if available. And I do understand that that's not always a possibility. So again, that's that's why disinfecting comes in handy, and it's it's paramount. Caregivers of anyone who has been in close contact with someone who has tested COVID-19 should also stay home and quarantine themselves. Um, it's important that we help the person who is sick always follow their doctor's instructions for care and, and, and proper medicine administration. For most people, symptoms last a few days and people usually tend to feel better after a week. Um, a see if over-the-counter medicines for fever help that person feel better. Make sure that the person who is sick also drinks lots of fluids and, and gets plenty of rest. Um, also, it's very important for you as a caregiver to someone in your home who has tested positive is to also look for warning signs within yourself for COVID-19. So if someone is showing, which might include you or anyone else in the family that might be showing any of the following signs, we do recommend that they seek um, emergency medical care immediately. So these signs may include trouble breathing, uh, persistent pain, or pressure in the chest. And if so, it's important that they call 911 and call ahead to your local emergency facility to notify them that uh, you are seeking care for someone or for yourself who may have tested positive for COVID-19. If you have a family member who is in isolation because they have tested positive, you will need to remain in quarantine in the home as you have been a close contact of this family member. 
it's important that you stay home until 14 days after your last contact with this family member. Also check your temperature twice a day is good and also watch for symptoms of COVID-19. And if possible, stay away from people who may be at higher risk for getting sick um, of COVID-19 or perhaps who also have other underlying medical conditions.